your idol turned mentor turned friend, uh, John Backer, uh, he would do f like 50 fingertip pull-ups as part of his training. And when asked why, he, he said, I don't train so that I can do the moves. I train so that I know that I can do the moves. Um, essentially this thought towards, I think, especially with the stakes being so high when it comes to soloing that um, the training became a way to uh, essentially build confidence. D d is that a concept that that um, resonates with you as well? Essentially just training well beyond what you would ever need to be actually called upon to use on a particular climber crux? Uh, okay, so I, when he was doing all that stuff, you know, I just shook my head and, you know, headed for the crags. <laughs> um, he, was, he was way ahead of all of us as, as far as training goes. And I remember um, I've, I've rarely soloed with anybody else, but John was one of the very few people I could solo with. And, uh, and it didn't mess with my head. Usually I didn't want to solo even near somebody else just because um, it kind of creeped me out. But he was so solid that sometimes we'd go soloing together. But... Um, and we would just do tons of pitches um, at some of the crags in, in Yosemite. But I remember one time we went to this thing called the Knobby Wall and we were just going to go top roping on it. It's just like this really overhanging, super short thing. And I got on one of the easier routes there. I can't remember, Easy 512 or something like that. And I, I, I think maybe I barely did it, but he was just astonished at how weak I was. You know, he says, how can you climb 511 cracks all day long and, you know, basically thrash your way up something like this. He was brutally honest, but it was, it was super true. Um, but for me, it, uh, I, I would have done well to do at least some of the stuff like he was doing, but my focus really was on, uh, on long routes, on long crack and in basically in North America, particularly in Yosemite, mostly that means long crack routes. Um, but sort of in the way that you're talking about with John and how he said, I just don't want to be strong enough. I want to know that I'm strong enough. I want to feel basically that I have, you know, a lot in reserve. And so I, I can relate to that in the way that, say, when I um, first sold Astroman, um, I mean, it was sort of normal for me to go to places like the Cookie and Arch Rock where there's a lot of, you know, steep, you know, 3-4 pitch, uh, you know, 5-11 finger cracks and stuff. And I would, you know, go do 40 or 50 pitches and it was just, it wasn't like a really big day. That was just, you know, that was just a day out at the crags that that season, the winter prior, I was in the Australian summer down at, in, uh, Mount Arapiles and the Grampians and stuff. And, you know, on some days we, you know, I'd, I'd get up to, you know, over a hundred pitches in a day. So anyway, what, what I'm Jeez. doing is, or just <laughs> apart from spraying, <laughs> is is just saying by the time I got to Astroman, it was just kind of like, you know, before I actually jumped on to Astroman, earlier in the morning, you know, I went down to, um, I don't know if you know any of the routes there, but basically down Valley and did, uh, you know, some multi-pitch 511 crags um, or routes to just uh, partly in a way of uh, like historically, I, I did some solos of some routes that Backer done. And when he did them, they were kind of, you know, uh, landmark 511 solos. And uh, I sort of felt like historically that was kind of a cool thing to do, but it was also a good way to warm up. For me, going to Astroman, it, it was... I wanted to make sure that fitness wasn't even any kind of an issue at all. That had, you know, so that... And I also would have viewed it as a, a total failure if when I got to the top, I was tired at all. And... Um, yeah, when I got to the top, it was just like more energy than when I started. So yeah, that same thing that what you're talking about with John, where he said he wanted, in in essence, he wanted to be way more than fit enough for, for what he was going to do. Hey y'all, thanks so much for watching these videos. Quick 30 seconds to tell you about the Patreon that I've started to help fund this massive operation running out of my podcast slash YouTube slash utility closet, which I'm coming to you from right here. Um, check out the Patreon down below. I've got pro clinics with some of the biggest names in the sport, exclusive for patrons, helping you learn how to level up in your training and your performance, all sorts of other bonus content. Appreciate your support. Check it out. Yeah, that's really interesting. There's such a through line with, with y'all, you know, kind of 
just monster whether it's soloing or just very can 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 do a, a a ton of what would one would consider incredibly technical and challenging pitches when i spoke with alex about when he soloed the free rider it was very similar he got to the top and he was ready to just keep going he went he, he came down and he started training and it it wasn't about getting to the top and feeling wrecked and like oh my gosh i just did the thing it was uh as you say I mean, even taking it to the point where you're saying, if I if I'm tired at the top, uh, it, that's a failure. So I, I'm assuming, at, you know, that means it's a it's a failure of preparation, a failure yeah, of training. You know, yeah. And, and I I remember hearing from a couple of different people where they're saying that, oh yeah, I heard Alex said that, you know, he kind of felt like he could just do it again. He just felt like bags of energy on top, and they're kind of like, yeah, I think he's kind of blowing smoke. No way. I totally, um, I thought it was only not only. Uh, very believable but also it was great to hear that it wasn't like oh man I, I picked a bad day or i started to feel sketched or instead he just felt like you know he had he had over prepared and that's exactly what you should do in that kind of situation and and part of it is so that you can take it in so that you're not just kind of like oh he is incredible uh tunnel visions just and just trying to keep it together to get to the top and instead feeling like wow look at where i am this is like one of the coolest things ever maybe the coolest thing he'll ever do um and to be able to really drink it in and, and part of that means you have to over prepare well it sounds very similar in a sense to to that experience with astroman which which at the time was as cutting edge maybe even more mind-boggling at the time for somebody to solo astroman than when alex did el cap or, or at least very very similar i mean i mean at that time nobody could have would, have would have ever wrapped their heads around soloing el cap but Again, at the time that you did Astroman, nobody would have wrapped their heads around soloing Astroman. And and I recall listening to an interview with you where essentially the business on Astroman uh, is over at a point where then you have some, for you at least, fairly moderate pitches to, to get to the top. And you were talking about how that's when you tucked in and just really enjoyed every moment. Yeah. I, I mean, for, for me on Astroman, I think I was so psyched that um, I, I started to get a bit too amped up. Not like in a sketchiness way, but um, I, I realized I, I was climbing a bit too fast to really enjoy it. And I was just like, I got to really take this in. And uh, so at a certain point, about two thirds of the way up or maybe a bit less, there were still some more 511 pitches up higher. But um, I stopped on a, a ledge and took off my shoes. And, and you know, I'm just like, it was like this ideal that I'd had ever since I was a little kid watching Tarzan movies. You know, Tarzan swings through the jungle. You know, I'm up there and I got like, you know, some red Adidas running shorts on, no shirt. I've taken off my shoes. There's nobody else on the wall. And I'm just checking out where I'm in. And you're surrounded by all this orange streaked granite walls just overhanging above you. And I'm just like in this super cool place. And I just hung out there for a little while, looking over at Half Dome and checking out where I was. And then put on my shoes and, and just slow down enough to just to really... um imprinted on my mind and to really take it in so that um so that i wouldn't lose it 